This module is going to describe how to get the magnetic field of an oscillating dipole given that we know the vector potential. This picks up from a previous module. The magnetic field as a function of position and time is given by the curl of this vector potential. So now we jump over to doing some math. How are we going to take the curl of this big ugly expression? It helps to know the following theorem that the curl of a scalar function f times a vector function g can be broken apart sort of like a, sort of like a product rule. rule. So the first term is f times the curl of g and the second term is minus g cross product with the grad of f. So right away we see that there's something attractive about this second term. I no longer have to take a curl, I only have to take a grad and that's usually easier. The second thing to notice is that if g doesn't depend on space so that there's no has no spatial derivatives then this would go to zero if if g has no space dependence has in this case we would say no r dependence doesn't depend on position that turns out to be a very powerful way of looking at this expression because we can identify if we just take e to the i k r over r you'll notice that's the only place in this expression that depends on position and it's not a vector it's a scalar so we are going to call that f our function f everything else then is going to be a vector g i won't bother writing that out but what this allows us to do is then say that b is f curl of g well that's going to be zero because this g function has no space dependence minus g grad f cross g crossed into the grad of f so negative of this g if you work that out the negative cancels that negative sign you get a positive i a lot of these terms are just the same. So I'll copy most of that. There's the omega. There's the e to the minus i omega t. I'm going to put a bracket around this because these guys are really just along for the ride in this whole derivation. And then the vector part of that, what we're going to call g, is the dipole moment p naught. And then that just gets, we take the cross product with the grad of the f function and the grad of the f function is e to the i kr over r. That's the thing we have to take the grad of. So to take this grad, we need another math fact, and you'll be thinking about this on your homework, but it turns out that the, the gradient of e to the i kr over r is pretty easy in spherical coordinates. And what we care about here for this tutorial is the upshot. It's a, the grad of a scalar must be a vector but it just points in the direction r hat and there's two terms i k minus one over r and then you get back the original function as you often do when you take derivatives of exponential like things so with this math fact plugged in to the left side here it becomes pretty easy to write out the next line of what the magnetic field is and i'll just make that appear all I've done here is literally copy over the line above, but where I have p dipole moment crossed into something, I stick in r hat and then all the other stuff that we saw over here. Now I can start doing some grouping, and uh, let me do that. So I'll copy over the constants from the front, and I'll write this omega. I'll now take the i k minus 1 over r, and I'll put it here. and that's because the k can be written in terms of an omega as we'll see in a second. Then I will write the full exponential expression which is 
combining this exponential and this exponential, I get e to the i kr minus omega t over r. And then lastly, I'll write the, the vector direction of the magnetic field, which is dipole moment crossed into r hat. This expression for the magnetic field is mathematically where we want to get to, and we'll talk in class about the physical meanings of it, but there are a couple of things worth dwelling on while you're paying attention here. One, remember that k can be written as omega over c naught, so that omega and this omega will give us an omega squared. The second thing to notice is that if we want to know what the magnetic field is far away from a dipole, when r, when we're many wavelengths are much, much greater than lambda away from the dipole itself, which is usually the case in optics, then this term, 1 over r, that becomes approximately 0 compared to k. If you write out the math of this, all when r is much, 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 much greater than lambda, 1 over r is much, much less than 1 over lambda, or much, much less than k. So that term will go away. I now pick up an omega squared. These two i's multiply each other to give me an overall minus sign out in front. This, there's a c naught in the denominator, which is going to interact with this mu naught. Then I've got an omega squared. I've got an e to the i. I've got my standard form of a spherical wave depending harmonically on time. And I've got a direction. And the very last thing to pay attention to here is that p naught cross r hat. If we just look at what that is, suppose that the origin, the, vec the oscillations are up and down. Let's suppose the upward direction is the, what we defined as p naught. And if we're out at some location over here, then vector r hat points in this direction, and p naught upwards crossed into r hat vector. That's a cross product that looks like this. Here's the p, here's the r. These two vectors crossed into each other represent an into and out of the board oscillation. So the magnetic field everywhere is, when you look at it with p and r in the plane of this page, the magnetic field will be pulsating into and out of the plane of the page. It pulsates because it has time dependence, so it's not that important to stress about whether this vector p naught cross r hat points into or out of the page. The point is that it's going to be an oscillation into and out of the page. And we are now done. This expression is the full useful magnetic field expression for the magnetic field of a dipole when you are many wavelengths away from the dipole itself. I'll just note, without putting it into the mathematical expression itself, that, of course, this term, the magnitude of this term, is the sine of theta, the angle between the oscillation and the location vector. And that's what tells us that strong magnetic fields are radiated in, say, this direction, perpendicular to the dipole moment, and no magnetic field is generated along the direction of the oscillation. That's an observation which should agree with some stuff that we've done in class.